A report emerged on Sunday that the Saints are talking to free agent quarterback Jameis Winston about doing a contract. And now that the window is closed on the compensatory draft pick formula, they are free to get that done with no impact whatsoever on how many compensatory draft picks the Saints would get next year, how many the Buccaneers would get as part of the strategic effort to delay the signing in order to influence that process next year. But assistant GM Jeff Ireland in the New Orleans Saints was on Matt Mosley's radio show on Monday, Chris, and he acknowledged that they are talking to Jameis Winston and he made it clear that it's in Jameis Winston's best interest to join the Saints. Said Ireland, Breeze is an incredible leader. He's an incredible studier of the game, how he breaks down his opponents. And then you throw in offense coordinator Pete Carmichael, quarterbacks coach Joe Lombardi, and coach Sean Payton on the offensive side of the ball. Those creative minds. Jameis Winston will learn more football in a year than he has in his lifetime. That may be true, but man, that's a slap at everyone else that ever coached Jameis Winston, the idea that he'll learn more from Sean Payton, Pete Carmichael, and Joe Lombardi in one year than he's learned in his entire life. Take that, Bruce Arians, head coach of the Buccaneers. Take that, Dirk Cutter, offensive coordinator of the Atlanta Falcons. Take that, Jimbo Fisher, who really won't matter to the Saints at this point because he coaches <laughs> Texas A&M. But Cutter and Arians have to be a little bit upset about this assessment, don't you think? Well, I, I, it's certainly – they're not going to read it and go, oh, how nice of Jeff Ireland to say. That, <laughs> yes, you're right. I mean, there's no doubt. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it'll, it'll, it'll piss them off to a degree. Uh, I don't think Jeff Ireland necessarily meant it that way. You know, I know Jeff Ireland a little bit. I think he was more touting the knowledge of coaches he has on his own staff and what they have in New Orleans, which is special. I mean, those names you talked about there, those are guys that – we know at first leading with Sean Payton, who's in the conversation for one of the best offensive minds we've seen in the sport over the last 20 years, you know, and of course the people underneath them and, and Carmichael and Lombardi have been talked about have been offensive coordinators, quarterback coaches, been in those conversations before too. So, uh, you know, you, you can't really deny the results. You know, it's a little bit of a slap in the face to a guy like Bruce Arians, who certainly put up some great offenses and Dirk Cutter has certainly earned his way here in the NFL too, but Sean Payton and what New Orleans do, they operate on a different level from the rest of the NFL. I don't think there's any doubt about that. You know, them, New England, there's a few other offenses out there that, yes, have their base scheme, but are also just on another level of creativity on a week-to-week -week basis with personnel sets and formations and new plays and things like that to where they're a cut above the rest of the NFL, in my opinion, the Saints that way. That's why I admire Sean Payton so much. But, but here's the thing with Jameis Winston, right? Bruce Arians specifically came out of retirement to coach Jameis Winston and the Buccaneers. They had a connection that went back to, like, pre-Florida State days. He had known Winston for years. He was all in on getting the most out of Jameis Winston. Every coach has that high level of confidence, bordering on arrogance, bordering on delusion, that they can fix any player that needs to be fixed. And Bruce Arians was going to fix Jameis Winston. And then by the end of the year... He couldn't wait to get rid of him, Chris, because he saw that that uh, uh, reduction in his abilities in December, that inability to rise to the occasion, that 30th interception in overtime against the Falcons that sealed their fate on the season. And he was just done. And and look, I, I know Bruce Arians, even though he's a two-time coach of the year, has never won a Super Bowl, but Sean Payton has. Um, I don't know. Is Sean Payton that much better of a coach? that he's going to iron out the rough spots with Jameis Winston when Arians just couldn't? Well, I, I, it's not necessarily – it's a little bit of a different, you know, a, a, a way to attack philo philosophical-wise. I guess that's the way I'm trying to say it here more than anything. You know, hey, we all know. You say it. We have fun all the time. Bruce Arians is no risk it, no biscuit. Jameis Winston, that's never been an issue for him. I mean, he's always risking it for an extra biscuit. We, we've, we've, that's what worries us. So I don't know if the combination, you know, two negatives don't always equal a positive, right? That's where I think maybe you could make an argument to now where you go with Sean Payton, where their offense is about efficiency, and he is the master of getting wide receivers wide open, you know, five and six yards down the field, which also makes a, a quarterback be more comfortable with decision-making through the game. Because, you know, Jameis Winston at times, too, he played on a team that was – not always great, 
and he had to force the issue and goes, damn, there hasn't been somebody open in the last seven times I've dropped back to pass. Let me try to make a play and jumpstart our offense, and that has led to bad things. He won't have to do that if he plays with the New Orleans Saints. Sean Payton will be like, hey, relax. I'll, I'm the king of getting the guys wide open for six-yard gains. You don't have to do risk it, no biscuit. You can sit here and just listen to what I say, and I'll find you some easy completions, and then those big pass plays will kind of just come to you throughout the flow of the game because everybody worries about those other things. So that's where I think it's a good mesh, Mike. And, and, and look, I love Teddy Bridgewater, but I would have never expected him to go 5-0 and last year with Drew Brees injured. Never, ever. And right. Sean Payton found a way to make it happen. Now, Teddy Bridgewater did it, but Sean Payton helped him do it. No doubt. So I agree with you. The idea of building confidence. You talk about this all the time. Easy completions early in a game just to get the nerves out of it, to build up that confidence, to get a guy believing right. he can make the big throws down the field in a big spot. That That's part of the philosophy, and that's part of the challenge of designing a game plan. It's not just attacking the defense. It's putting together plays that help your players get into the zone, get into the rhythm, 100%, get into the mindset Mike. necessary to win. And, uh, you know, I don't want Drew Brees to get injured, but if Winston does sign with the Saints, and I was told last night it's definitely going to happen, I, I kind of want to see him play. I kind of want to see what you. he can do. Not, not, not coming in off the bench. I want to see him start a game at some point for the Saints this year, a game that counts, a game that matters. And, again, the only way that's going to happen is if Drew Brees gets injured, so I'm not wishing that on him. I mean, I guess Brees could just fall off a cliff this year from the standpoint of his skill set and get benched, although I don't think that's going to happen either. I just want to see what Winston can do with Sean Payton as the head coach. It's nothing about Breeze. It's all about I want to see what Winston can do. I, I, I'm with you, Mike. I, I mean, yeah, I hear you. And, and yeah, I don't want anything happen to Drew Breeze. I, I want to see a great last year. I want to see the Saints make a run. I just got too much respect for all of them in that organization uh, where I enjoy their style of play. But yes, I mean, Jameis Winston – in an offense like that, you know, it, there's you, you think there's potential for special. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And, Mike, I think you're, you know, again, what you said about early completions, it is real. That's a real it, – it, it filters throughout the whole football team. I mean, how many times I've seen great offenses, whether it's Kyle Shannon or Tom Brady in New England or Sean Payton and Drew Brees, the first drive of the game, we can go back and watch games of the New England Patriots, and I'll go, yeah, you know – the, the, the TV announcers will go to break and go, Brady's on fire, seven for eight after the first drive. And you sit there and really watch what he did. And you go, he threw six screen passes, a slant route. And the coaching staff just did a great job of game planning. But yet it gives everybody that confidence. The quarterback, the offense, the offensive players look at the stats on the big screen board. And they go, man, our quarterback's on fire. Look at him. Even though he might not have thrown a real pass yet to that point of the game. So, that is a very real aspect of building the confidence of the offense and the quarterback. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.